Vespa? Yeah? Why are we here? Talk about Sonic. <laughs> I mean, more than that, you know? It's one of life's great questions. Oh. Yeah, uh, well, talk about the Sonic comics and cartoons. More specifically, we're here because we recorded five episodes worth of content, and we realized, wait a minute, this story, this podcast just sort of jumps in and assumes you just know everything about Sonic going in. And so, here we are recording in episode zero, just a bit of a primer. We hear, we assume you know, dear listener, who Sonic the Hedgehog is, but past that, we're gonna go into a bit of a brief primer on what you might need to know going on to this podcast. And so, what's first on our docket? History of Sonic. So long ago, back in an arcade racing... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, where do we start with this? Uh, presumably with uh, Fatty M, uh, the cartoon that would inspire Archie Comics and Sonic... Okay. Uh, I have, like, uh, the information uh, running up. Sega of America's CEO saw potential in Sonic as a brand and wanted to make a show with him. They originally pro- approached Saban, a.k.a. the guys behind Power Rangers. Man, having a Power Rangers Sonic would have been amazing, <laughs> honestly. Uh, my, what a missed opportunity. I think my mind was like going towards like it being like some sort of awful like costume live action show, like the TMNT Next Mutation show. Oh, um, yeah, that would have been great. No, no, it wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> it would be awful. But instead of the Bond, we ended up. Ha- uh, they ended up going with. Deek, a.k.a. the guy behind the Super Mario cartoons, among other video game adaptations. Deek uh, were the ones that came up with the Freedom Fires, uh, at the time being referred to as a Freedom Team for Sonic, and went to ABC to pitch it, who surprisingly were very fond of the idea and greenlit it. But when they uh, Deek wanted to have Sonic on weekly syndication and Saturday morning blocks, ABC wanted Sonic to be exclusively for them, rather than like having it like float around in syndication. This led to Deke coming up with two versions of the Sonic cartoon. One that would become Sad AM, the darker, more serious, story-focused Sonic adaptation. The other being a more light-hearted, wacky, cartoon, cartoonish Sonic uh, cartoon called <laughs> Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. I work a proof of decision, and we got Adventures of Sonic and Fat AM together. Yeah, and so let's briefly touch upon the characters as well. Um, we have Sonic, the snarky, wise Alec that everyone knows, voiced by Julio White in both cartoons. In both cartoons, we also have Tails, who in this version is not a high-tech gadgeteer like you're more used to in modern Sonic, but more just the little kid. Yeah. He, he <laughs> idolizes and looks up to Sonic, but he's basically just a little kid. In the Japanese version, Tails was still a genius mechanic, but for whatever reason, that was left out of the Western localization of Sonic up until, I think, the Tails Adventure game on Game Gear, where it was pretty much impossible to hide the fact that Tails is a lot smarter than uh, the West thought he was. <laughs> mm-hmm. We also have Princess Sally Acorn, who's separated from her father and a long-running plot thread in both the comic and cartoon is trying to figure out where her father is and how they can save him and restore uh, Mobotropolis from Robotnik's clutches. We also have her royal guard, Antoine, who's a huge coward and is also with a very thick French accent. Despite of France not existing in the Sonic universe. We also have Rodor, or Boomer, as he's referred to in the Archie comics for reasons we'll get into in later episodes. He's more of the gadgeteer and inventor type, as you'd expect from Tails in the later series. 
And finally, for Sad AM, we have Bunny Rabot, a character introduced immediately within the cartoons, but introduced later on within the comics. A rabbit lady who's partially roboticized, roboticization being a thing this universe's version of Robotnik does, where he just turns people into robot slaves. And she's basically a cyborg, a bionic bunny, as it were. And we have, within the two cartoons, two different versions of Robotnik. In Sad AM, he's more depicted as far more menacing than how you'd expect him in the uh, modern depiction of him as Eggman. And in Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, he's depicted as far more bumbling and cartoonish to match the more lighthearted nature of the cartoon. In Sad AM... He has a henchman, second-in-command, Snively, a bald-headed, uh, goober-ass-kisser, as it were. Um, but in Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, we have a group of badniks known as the... Uh, help me out here, Vespa. The, the S5, basically. The Sonic Search and Smash Squad, I think is what they're called. Mm-hmm. Which is a group of badniks consisting of... Scratch, Grounder, and Coconuts, um, being a robotic chicken, a robotic, uh, I don't know how to describe Grounder other than, like, a trash can with legs and a drill nose, and Coconuts being a monkey. Yeah, with all three of them being inspired of by Badniks from the, uh, Sonic 2 game, with Grounder being the drill guys from Aquatic Ruin, Coconuts obviously being the Coconuts enemies you fight and start the game, and presumably Scratch being based after the chicken turret guys you fight on the uh, second to last level. As mentioned before, we have two cartoons here. We have Sad AM, which is much more serious and dark, having a bit of an overarching plot, but still a more loose one. And then we have Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, which is just a very zany, cartoony romp. Um, interestingly enough, we never got any games featuring the characters from Sad AM, but we did get some of the characters from Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog appearing in Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, which was one of the many, many times they tried localizing Puyo Puyo into the West, but that's a story for another podcast. Well, to be fair, we technically got the Freedom Fighters and as a cameo appearance in Spinball. Yeah, the Sonic pinball game that everyone loves. <laughs> it, it's something, I suppose. Mm -hmm. That's basically it for within what I would say you need to know about the cartoons other than basic groundwork of the group in Sad AM are called the Freedom Fighters, and they exist in a village called Knothole, where it's basically a ref like refugees trying to survive. And so that takes us into a brief history of the comics, and what leads to the comics being published. Right. In July 1992, Michael Gallagher, a writer for Archie's Betty and Veronica comics, would be called about the company's acquisition of the Sonic license, and was tasked with creating a comic based on it in the upcoming uh, Sad AM cartoon. Deke provided the basics, such as earlier line art of the cast, and details regarding the three main characters, Sonic Robotnik and the princess character, possibly not named at the time, but Archie would be the ones coming up with the world building. We also f learn later on, as you'll see in a later episode, that's basically all they were given. Like, there's a lot of discrepancies. Mm. Like, the fur color of Sally changes three times over mm. the course of the comic run of Archie, and I alluded to it earlier of how the character of Rotor was originally named Boomer within the comics. It's... It's a weird, it's weird mess, and it's fascinating, but we'll get more into that as we get into the episodes proper. First issue of Archie Sonic, Sonic 1-4, a brief preview of the first story of issue Zero, the miniseries, would be released later in 1992, before being followed up with the, a four-issue miniseries in November 1992, alongside the release of Sonic 2 on the Genesis. We did also get a 
a one issue one shot like free comic meant to promote the first Sonic game that we do cover in the first episode for what it's worth. The series would begin releasing monthly in July 1993, nearly a year before that AM launched. Yeah, and I think one thing that's very interesting about the podcast is that we can see with how Archie puts these comics out monthly, basically a mental timeline of when Archie is out, but Sad AM isn't out, when Sad AM is out, but the comic writers haven't seen it yet because they've written in advance, when the writers have finally started watching the show, and when the show stops airing and the characters are just going on a continued story through the writers of the comic. So that's where we are right now. We're not whole historians, as it were. And so, <laughs> Good let's go it. into a brief overview on ourselves, a brief introduction to the minds of us, as it were. I am Camilla. I've grown up with the Sonic games. My first games in the Sonic franchise were the remakes of, well, the ports of Adventure 1 and 2 for the GameCube, and I watched, like, a lot of Sonic X growing up, and I was always just a massive Sonic fan past that, but I never actually read the Sonic comics. I was always wanting to, but I just, I was just never really that into comics as a kid. Like, the most experience with, like, any comics I ever had was just watching um, Teen Titans and the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies. And so I mainly just had more of a passing interest in comics through that, but I think what's been interesting about this podcast so far is that it's helped me get much more into comics. Like, now I'm going to my local comic store. <laughs> Shoutouts to Nostalgia Newsstand. Um... And it's been a fun time experiencing this comic and, like, getting into comics as a whole. Um, what about you? What's your history with the Blue Blur himself? I think it's kind of similar to you. I, I think I had my first Sonic game was actually the original Sonic Adventure on Dreamcast, where I, I briefly had it when I was very young before I assumed we sold it off for another game console. And I, of course, had been like properly introduced to the franchise through the Mega Collection and the GameCube ports of the original Adventure Duology. And I had discovered Archie Sonic also through Sonic Mega Collection through the various covers it had, as well as the Sonic First, which is basically like a selection of some of the first few issues of an Archie Sonic that introduced certain characters and aspects of the series. I've had a very on and off history with Sonic. It wasn't until I believe like around the mid two, 2010s where on the Two Best Friends Play subreddit when like the back when they were still with the Super Best Friends Play when Liam was around and they were doing Sonic playthroughs. Some users on there who were longtime fans of the Sonic franchise were posting about fun facts with the various Sonic sub-series and spin-offs, including a lot of Archie fun facts, both positive and awkward negatives, <laughs> to say the least, but it was, it helped reignite my interest in the franchise, given, like, how well, I knew about Archie after Mega Collection, my experience with it was more just, like, occasionally seeing and hearing about, like, some dumb stuff that happened in it that just kind of put me off from ever checking it out. But, like, hearing about it through these fans, like, got me really interested in wanting to check out Sonic, and it helped reignite my interest in the franchise. And now I'm, I'd say I'm much more of, like, a, like, Sonic lore nerd than Cammy in terms of <laughs> that I love to do wiki diving and just looking into all the weird and like strange parts of the franchise. I mean, I'm a wiki diver too. I eh, fair. Looking TV tropes represent and all that. Same here. Also, you're Vespa, by the way. I I don't know if you said your name at the top, but you're Vespa. <laughs> I I don't know. I am Vespa. The Vespa. Vespa. The Vespa. <laughs> 
<laughs> we, we, we have our own OCs, as you can see by the thumbnail. I'm Camilla the Void, because I like being edgy, and they're Vespa the Wasp, or <laughs> Vespa the Vespa, because language is cool and like that. No, I thought like bugs. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, with my history of comics, I, I always wanted to get into them as a kid, but like, we did not have... At least for a long while, it didn't seem like there was any comic stores near us. Like, I remember going to one once as a kid, and that was about it. But, like, around, like, the 2010s, we did find, like, some local comic book stores. And But while I tried my best to look for any Sonic comics I could at either one of those stores, it wasn't until, like, around, like, the last few years that I actually found some of the Sonic uh, IDW comics at them and as well as like a few scant issues of Archie Sonic that I've picked up once they're once I own are far 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 from what we will be reading though unfortunately <laughs> yeah, yeah I, that's my like a <laughs> that's pretty much my history of Sonic in comics another note for those who might not be fully knowledged on the history of Sonic the comic, which also leads into our next point as well. Um, Sonic has had multiple comic runs. In the Americas, he had the Archie comics, and in Europe, he had the Fleetway comics, colloquially referred to as Sonic the comic, or just Fleetway. Um, the Archie comics ran from 94 to about 2016, 2017. Correction from Post Camilla, I meant to say 92, not 94. A lot of yeah, de insane to me. development issues go on, up to and including a series reboot that doesn't ultimately pan out due to lowered sales and just a lot of factors that we'll get into way later, but long and short of it, a lot of mismanagement went on with Archie. And so... They eventually lost the rights, cancelled the comic, and production moved on to IDW, where we have Sonic today, still having uh, new stories, new adventures within a new continuity. Um, currently at issue 64 at time of recording, though also having his 900th adventure being a special one-shot to commemorate having basically 900 issues up to this point across all of his comic runs. Um, the reason we have our podcast title pendering, well, it's because we couldn't think of a good name for it, but also... Right. One of the writers, <laughs> one of the more notorious writers, goes by the name of Ken Penders. Um, if you don't know anything about the Sonic Archie comics, if you don't know much about the Sonic Archie comics, rather, you probably know about Ken because he's a very notorious figure within the Sonic community. To say the least. But we're not going to go into that much detail about that here because that's kind of the point of this podcast is for us to blindly go where no hedgehog has gone before and <laughs> explore the Archie comics for ourselves and see, was it really all that bad? The answer is probably I've heard a lot, both of us have been spoiled on a lot of things, and it goes in a lot of yeah. really weird directions. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we just thought, A, make a joke about our indecision with the title, and B, make a little nod to one of the more famous, or rather infamous, aspects of the comic. Um, but that does bring me to one last point, um... Don't harass Ken. Don't harass anyone else on the Sonic writer staff. Yeah. Like, I don't know the full context of everything that's gone on with Ken. But, like, at the end of the day, he's just a guy. Let, like... One last addendum in post, just to make things clear. We're both aware that Ken's had a controversial presence on social media, ranging from going into uncomfortably candid deets about character relationships, making questionable tweets about LGBT, asexuality, minorities, and race, and saying disparaging things about Ian Flynn that, at best, doesn't understand how the internet works, especially with harassment, and at worst is low-key advocating for people to be shitty and harass Flynn. But at the end of the day, don't be an asshole and start shit with anyone we talk about on this podcast. 
It's just a shitty thing to do. It wastes everyone's time and energy, and let's be honest, you've got better things you can spend your life on than being a loser who obsesses over hating a 64-year-old comic writer just because he wrote Sonic wrong or says shitty things on social media. To transition back to the past me, we do end up getting worked up during the podcast, but that's all in good fun. We just get worked up about things that don't matter because it's fun to rant and ramble about things that don't matter. We both try our best to make it clear when something's actually offensive and when we're just laughing at weird artwork or weird storylines. There's a lot that we've gone through in the comic thus far that one can consider problematic, but you also have to consider that this is a comic that has been going on for decades, and we're currently still reading through stuff in the 90s, and so a lot of things were more acceptable than even if they're ultimately just problematic things that shouldn't have been acceptable back then, but for the love of God, please don't send harassment to anyone. Don't don't be a loser, honestly. <laughs> to quote the <laughs> one of the famous quotes from uh, Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, that's no good. Um... <laughs> <God>. <laughs> But with that, let's wrap up with a brief overview of the structure of the podcast. We start with the recap zone, in which we just describe each story beat by beat, give some general thoughts on them, but as the story starts going from episodic mo of monster of the day to more overarching stories, the structure of the podcast might change a bit. We might end up having just full-on recap, and then our thoughts, rather than story thoughts, story thoughts. But then, after that, we wrap up with the opinion zone, in which we discuss our overall feelings towards the batch of issues we read, as well as what we're hoping for, looking forward to, and other things within the next batch of issues. Along the way, we'll have bonus episodes called Special Stages, Generally just miscellaneous odds and ends, things that didn't really fit the flow of the podcast but still thought it worth pointing out, as well as a tier list for basically every character featured within the batch of the comics, increasing more and more <laughs> the more characters were introduced, and honestly, it's going to get really big after a while, and that absolutely terrifies me. Is it's already been absolute chaos at this point <laughs> in the recording with our tier list, and it's only going to get more deranged the further we go along. But with that, we introduce you to a story of writing changes, mismanagement, and a whole, whole ton of characters. Welcome to the Title Pendering Podcast, the Sonic Comic Recap Podcast, where we've been off more than we can chew, but that's a-okay. Mm -hmm.